today's video, will steady state cardio reduce your testosterone levels? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Vella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I'm gonna address the question of how to do cardio so that we don't negatively impact our hormones. Because ultimately, what we wanna do when we're doing cardio is get leaner, lose body fat, improve our body composition, improve our conditioning. We don't want to unintentionally put ourselves in a position where our testosterone, estrogen, growth hormone, all these levels are impacted in a negative way. And if you like this type of information around nutrition, training, the evidence-based approach, and I'm gonna explain the science behind this stuff, well, hit subscribe. It's what I love to do here. And today's question comes from right here on my Instagram direct message. So what I'd like to do is read the question and then we'll get into it. My head is spinning with conflicting information. I'm being told guys in their 50s should stay away from steady state cardio because it will increase cortisol and lower my testosterone levels. What is your take on this? I need my cardio to reach my goals. Thank you again. Well, it's a very good question and it needs to be addressed because there's been a lot of information that has been misrepresented when it comes to cardiovascular exercise, especially in terms of body composition, lowering body fat, keeping muscle. And so what I'd like to do is dig into a little bit of some research that kind of explains things. And then I wanna give you my take on how I approach it with my athletes, with myself, I'm 44 this year, how do I use cardio to get lean? The first study I wanna reference, and I'll link it below and I'll put it on the screen here, they actually looked at what would happen to a group of young men, college age, that went through two types of cardio. High intensity cardio or moderate st steady state cardio. Now, I consider low intensity cardio walking you know, or slightly faster than walking. Moderate intensity would be something like going out for a jog or trying to run a race, like a 5K, a 10K, something like this, right? That's moderate intensity. High intensity cardio, just so we're clear, is literally life or death sprinting. If you are not doing life or death sprints, like I'm not gonna make it, it's literally I cannot catch my breath, I'm barely able to breathe, then it's not high intensity, it's just higher intensity, okay? Hit cardio, true hit cardio is insane, okay? I've done it for years. And you know, if you play sports, it's probably not so insane to you. But for the average person, it's something that, you know, you probably gotta be a little bit careful, especially if you're just getting into physical activity. You don't want that heart rate too crazy. But what was interesting in that study was that they found that both the moderate cardio and the high intensity cardio increased cortisol levels. Now, for those that aren't familiar, cortisol is the stress hormone. It's the response to our body being in stress, okay? So let's say we wake up in the morning, that's actually a stress, cortisol increases. Let's say we work out, cortisol increases. Let's say we do some cardio, cortisol increases. No big deal, because it's gonna come back down. It's actually a good thing that it goes up, but it needs to come back down. The problem with HIIT cardio was that it showed it was still elevated 12 hours later, where it wasn't with the moderate cardio. So that would be the first indicator that perhaps HIIT cardio isn't the best for your goals. In the next study, they actually examined a third group, which was low intensity steady state cardio. And something very interesting happened in that group. They actually had lower cortisol levels after they completed their cardio session. So they were actually less stressed. So I think from my perspective, what I'm looking at for someone that's concerned about body composition goals is that Oftentimes, going for a run, like a 5K, going for a mile, couple mile run, that moderate intensity cardio, we adapt to that very quickly, okay? Our body gets very efficient, and so we're not actually burning that many calories. In fact, some research shows that we're not actually burning that much more calories if we just walk the same distance. The problem is the adaptive nature of the cardio we're performing. Hit cardio as well. When you're performing hit cardio, you adapt to it. You get very good at it. And HIIT cardio is great for many things, but if conditioning is not a concern for yours, whereas the reason you're performing it is to be better at your sport, better at your given, I don't know, thing that you enjoy doing, then I find it to be a bit detrimental. I don't do HIIT cardio when it comes to getting in contest shape. And if I have people doing high intensity cardio, I make sure that they're getting plenty of rest. Because we also have something that's gonna induce a lot of stress and cortisol in our lives if we're working on bodybuilding, and that is lifting weights. If you're lifting weights at a high intensity, we all know those are very demanding, especially lower body workouts. 
So if you take someone that is, let's say they're not getting enough sleep, they're a little bit stressed, they're already working out a bunch, they're on low calories, they're stressed because they're not dropping weight, and then you have them doing HIIT cardio multiple times per week, this is a recipe for disaster. High intensity interval cardio, I, in my mind, if you're doing more than two sessions a week, it's probably too much. And there's probably some cases where I could, you know, I could be, my opinion could be changed, but for a bodybuilder getting on stage, it's not one of those cases. It can be very detrimental to be doing too much HIIT cardio. In your case with being a 50 year old male who needs to do cardio to lose body fat but is concerned about things like testosterone, high levels of cortisol consistently can disrupt things like our thyroid, our testosterone, our estrogen, our growth hormone. These are all things that are very important for our body composition. So this is why I wouldn't want somebody to be chronically in a state of being stressed. And it's very important that we're able to keep our cortisol levels in check. So I think uh, you're right to worry about steady state cardio. The word steady state gets used to describe a vast array of cardio, but I'll say this, walking, even incline walking, even steady state on a bike or incline uh, walking or elliptical, that is so low intensity that I would say there is very low chance that you're gonna have a negative impact on something like testosterone. However, if you are gonna perform long distance endurance running and you're gonna perform high intensity cardio, this is where I could see potentially running into an issue. So it all comes down to the style of steady state that you perform. And ultimately, what you can do is, if you're really curious about this, you can get your blood tested. You can go into a lab, uh, LabCorp, maybe not right now, but you know when things open back up. And we can get in and get a blood test done, and you can look at where your testosterone levels are now, and you can look at where your testosterone levels are down the road. But I think the most important aspect, if you do want to do moderate forms of steady state cardio or high intensity cardio is just that you make sure that you're recovering, that you're getting adequate sleep, that you're getting adequate recovery, and you're not constantly in a state of chronic stress. That's what I worry about when it comes to people reaching their physique goals and not being able to push through and their bodies stop responding because things like cortisol are gonna have a negative impact. And this is actually one of the reasons that I have my clients use a product called Core Hard, which contains, contains DIM and ashwagandha, because there's research that shows these supplements actually help reduce blood cortisol levels. So that's it, guys. Hopefully uh, this helps you out, my man. Yeah, if you, are, if you are interested in having the highest testosterone levels, I would say the lower intensity of the cardio, the better. Um, and just making sure that you're getting full recovery if there is a higher intensity to that cardio. I'm gonna say it over and over again. Incline walking on a treadmill. You know, speed around three, incline around five. You know, you're gonna be breathing, you're gonna be working a little bit, but it's so low intensity, but so effective at burning body fat. It's my favorite. All right, guys, that's gonna be it, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.